As you can clearly see from my collection here, I really love the cartoon Robotech. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's a very fun show. Got away with a lot more than you would expect for an action cartoon in the 80s. Very fun show. And I love these DVD sets. They have all these extra discs on them. They're very ni nice and neatly packaged. Uh, the, these are the unremastered ones. I love these sets more than anything. Um, but one of the things I noticed uh, missing from the extras is this Robotech the movie. Um, there's uh, some storyboards for it, there's some character sheets, uh, there's a trailer, there's even an interview that Carl Masick did for when the movie came out. But no Robotech the movie. And it's never been on DVD before, and I had to figure out why. Well, let's figure out why when the DVD dude investigates rare and forgotten films. In 1985, Harmony Gold's Robotech had become a syndication hit. Not unlike Voltron, it was a show assembled from various Japanese animated series that included Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospita. The three series were rewritten into an English script so that all three series, which originally had nothing to do with each other, would cover a generation of alien invasions on Earth and intergalactic war. Coupled with a very successful toy campaign, Robotech was admired by young and old alike for its soap opera-style storytelling, adventurous action, and honesty about the toll of combat, in which characters actually died. You didn't see that in a lot of cartoons at the time, especially from Voltron, which tried to cover it up as much as possible. The 85-episode series became an overnight success, which would have led to a 65-episode sequel series, but we'll save that tragic tale for another day. The following year, in 1986, Robotech series producer Carl Masick pitched the idea of a Robotech movie to Canon Films. According to Masick, the original plan was to adapt the anime video series Megazone 23 into the Robotech universe with its own movie that would have a new English script and music changes so it reflected uh, what Robotech was for the TV series. Basically, they were going to give Megazone 23 the Robotech treatment that they gave to Macross and Mospita and all that. Now, the plan was to relate it as a side story to the first Robotech arc, which was known as Macross in Japan. Unfortunately, though, Macross was starting to become its own thing in Japan with their own feature film called Macross Do You Remember Love, so that option kind of went out the window. In addition, Canon Films wasn't too keen on the Megazone 23 footage, feeling that there were too many girls and not enough action. So, to solve both problems, Carl Masick decided to set the story during the second Robotech arc, known in Japan as Southern Cross. Footage from Southern Cross was edited into Megazone 23 to make the connection, but unfortunately, both series were shot on different types of film and had vastly different qualities in animation, so it wasn't a very seamless editing job. You could sort of see where they were patching the story together there. And there was another problem. Canon Films did not like the ending and wanted it changed. Now, since there was no actual Japanese animation that Carl Mesa could use or borrow from, the new ending he would write would have to be created and commissioned by a studio. In particular, it was animated by the Idol Company studio. Thus, the only animation produced specifically for the film was the new ending. Finally, Robotech the movie was ready for cinemas and began a test run in Texas theaters. And that's about as far as it went, for a variety of reasons. Most notably was the rather negative reception by parents over the content. Now, Robotech was often known for getting away with a lot more than any other cartoon on television, but parents found themselves removing them and their families from the screening before the film had even finished. Other reasons included the competition at the time, with a little film called Transformers the Movie, and though Mesa claimed that the film did okay financially compared to the film Pirates that was also playing at the time, that's hardly worth praising as much. And lastly, the film didn't have much advertising, with commercials only airing in Robotech's regional time slot of 6am on weekdays. After its limited run in Texas, Robotech the movie did not expand into cinemas throughout the country, nor did it ever receive a home video release. However, the movie did quite well internationally in several countries of both South America and Europe. So successful that these territories saw home video release, though it was short-lived since Masek relinquished the rights to make his own 23 in an attempt to wash his hands of the project and just sort of forget about it. This makes the film very rare to find on VHS, given both its international and print-run exclusivity. The film had been released over various media in bits and pieces over the years, 
Now, for ADV Films on their first DVD release of the Robotech series in 2001, a host of special features from the film were included, such as the trailer, a public access interview with Carl Masick promoting the movie, and even the original animatic for the different ending that was commissioned. The movie itself was not included, however, but some fans held out hope that ADV Films would release the film since they did acquire the rights to make Zone 23 back, so they would really just have to coordinate with Harmony Gold to get all their ducks in a row. But Carl Masick was still alive at the time and probably didn't want them to dig that movie back up again, so that was a no-go. The 2011 re-release of the Robotech series featured 29 minutes of footage from the film, but these were only the sections of the film that were from Southern Cross, which they still have the rights to, and not the Megazone 23 part, which they still do not have the rights to at Harmony Gold. Now, if you look around on the internet, you can find a few fans that have preserved the movie digitally, and if you're extremely lucky, you may even find a VHS copy. And I suppose that if Harmony Gold put some effort into buying back the rights to make Zone 23, they could re-release the film on DVD, but it seems unlikely, given Masick's desire to write the film off as an error, that he would rather be left forgotten, even though he's died since then. And Harmony Gold seems to have much more on their plate at the time since they're trying to make a new Robotech movie for live action. Robotech the movie will go down as one of the strange concoctions of the Robotech franchise from Canon Films that may not be quite worth seeking out, but if you're really into Robotech as much as I am, it might be worth viewing once or twice.